So um, we're going to talk today about a collaboration between DARPA and NSF in the field of real-time machine learning. So, you know, as, as all of you know, um, AI and machine learning is, uh, is the bee's knees. Um, it's everywhere today, and the impact is profound. Um, you take things like autonomous drive, which when I was growing up, I never really thought about, but now I feel like it's definitely going to happen in our lifetime. Uh, um, talk about speech recognition, automatic translation, um, aut automatic cyber threat detection. Um, there are many, many examples of amazing advancements in machine learning and, and AI. And a lot of these advancements have come from an availability of data, incredible compute, um, and new uh, algorithms and realizations. Um, but there is a problem, right? So a lot of the successes to date have come uh, still at enormous uh, power levels. So. Uh, the system you see there is Google's TPU system. It could have been a GPU system or a CPU system. But generally, to train uh, a new network um, takes kilowatts of power. Now, if we want to deploy it in something tiny like that, like a tiny drone, uh, we're talking about maybe milliwatts. How do we go from kilowatts to milliwatts? All right. um, so we need something on the order of 1,000x more um, um, performance per watt if we want to make this realize realizable. So, um, I managed a program called Upside, uh, which was trying to look at this uh, 1,000x improvement uh, through things like analog computing, memristors. And uh, one of the problems we found is that because of the expense of doing every chip is so high, we're talking you know, tens of millions of dollars, um, you get a very sparse data set. So you really don't know if you're even moving in the right direction, or how do you compare apples to apples to make sure you're moving in the right direction? You can't really find a gradient. So, you know, this is the, uh, uh, what's mapped at ICCC every year. This is like the World Cup of, of circuit design. And we'd like to be up and to the right. Um, and, you know, we're moving in the right direction, but we really don't know if we have the right vector. So, uh, because of this high cost of design. Um, likewise, on, on the latency side, uh, most of the effort to date has been on high throughput, uh, not so much on real-time latency. Um, we have... Um, like the TPU and some FPGAs looking at millisecond range uh, inferences. Uh, what if we want to go much lower than that? Uh, we really don't know where the, the lower limit is. And more than that, we really want to fill the whole design space, right? We want to paint the space of possibilities to know what the right trade-off is. For certain applications, maybe we want to dial down the accuracy to get more throughput. Um, we don't really have the dials to do that. What we do today is we, we create instances. We take an algorithm that maybe a smart person designed, and we turn that into a chip. Um, this is a one-off. So, um, so in the, in the machine learning space, uh, one of the reasons that it's progressed so quickly is because they've built bridges uh, across these knowledge gaps. So if you take somebody who's working in uh, autonomous drive, that person is very probably not going to be an expert at, at CUDA optimization or you know, CPU assembly optimization. Uh, he may not even be an expert in, uh, in machine learning networks uh, that sit in the middle. So they've created things like TensorFlow and PyTorch and compilers which create the uh, optimized uh, low-level code. Uh, so that lets people focus on their area of expertise. It's an incredibly powerful concept. On the hardware side, we don't have that. So today what happens is somebody takes a, a new network and then manually translates that network into Verilog code uh, and, a, and a chip. Um, so, you know, wouldn't it be great if we can actually go from PyTorch or TensorFlow into an actual chip? Then maybe you can paint that whole space of possibilities uh, uh, and we could really find what the lower limits are. So, with that uh, being said, uh, what we kicked off here is a, um, a, a joint agency effort uh, consisting of two programs. The NSF portion, uh, which uh, uh, Sankar is going to talk about, is uh, Trying to, say, trying to find out new ideas, right? Where, where the, where's the thousand X gonna come from? Um, and doing that through co-design of algorithms and hardware. And uh, on the DARPA side, how do we actually make that real, realizable very quickly, right? So on the, uh, DARPA is gonna uh, create a, a machine learning compiler that goes from TensorFlow or PyTorch um, directly to silicon uh, with no human in the loop. It's a three-year program uh, cut into two 18-month phases. Uh, with very close coordination, uh, nine-month uh, workshops, uh, or workshops at nine months, 18 months, and 27 months, and, and, and finish. Um, so that being said, now Asanka is going to come out and uh, talk about the uh, NSF portion of this program.
Platz. Uh, thanks, Andreas. Um, thank you, DARPA, for letting us um, have this opportunity to speak about an NSF program. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, step back a little bit and tell you about what's going on in the space of AI um, at NSF in general, and then um, I will uh, dive back into um, the RTML program that uh, Andreas has talked about. Some of you um, might know that a year or two ago, um, NSF director Franz Cordova announced what is now called the 10 big ideas as a pathway towards what NSF is going to do for years to come. Not, not all 10 big ideas were uh, scientific ideas. Some of them were administrative and otherwise. Um, it had things like, uh, it has things like quantum computing, harnessing big data revolution, and topics of that nature. It did not have AI. The reason for that is AI is everywhere. It actually is in all 10 big ideas that Franz Cordova had talked about. So that behooved us to uh, find out how much is the level of investment in AI at NSF in general. Um, after some effort, it turned out that NSF, uh, without even this current um, uh, emphasis on AI, has been spending something like uh, $100 million of AI research on core AI problems and another 350 on applied problems in AI. Uh, I'll talk about all these a little bit more in the next slide or two, um, but it also needs to be mentioned that NSF has uh, leadership roles in several uh, uh, committees and subcommittees at OSTP and other places so in, when it comes to AI. The, um, our uh, assistant director for computer science and engineering, uh, James uh, uh, Kurose, he had spent uh, last summer at uh, OSTP, advising OSTP on AI-related research. Uh, we are also in the process of starting a number of uh, so-called AI institutes, uh, which will actually support long-term investments on AI. These are not three-year three or five-year programs. Institutes have a lifetime of 10 years or more. Um, so uh, what is this $100 million of AI research that NSF is funding? Uh, most of it actually comes from the computer science and, Engi in computer science and engineering directorate. Uh, they are segmented into various specific program areas. Um, for instance, machine learning is a program, computer vision is a program, reasoning representation, computational neuroscience is a separate program that's been in existence for last 20 or so years, uh, um, and so on and so forth. So the, in the slide, the blue blocks actually are each programs that has existed in NSF in the general area of AI for many years in the past. The, the, the gray, uh, boxes, which are data mining and uh, human-computer interaction, which are marginally related to AI in some sense, they have also been supported by NSF in the last decade or so. So all $100 million actually go into this set of programs. Where does the other set of programs come from? Okay, so... Um, uh, the cross-cutting AI research is actually um, is distributed over all seven directorates at NSF, bio, uh, computer science, engineering, uh, human resources, geosciences, mathematical and physical sciences, and social, behavioral, and economic sciences. The size of these dots actually approximately represent the amount of money that's being spent on the AI research in these particular programs. So for instance, at the very bottom on the right, you see cyber physical systems, which is a $34, $35 million program. Not all of it is AI, but good part of it is. Um, one of the important things about these 10 big ideas was partnership. Actually, partnership was also a, one of the 10 big ideas that was emphasized by Franz Cordova. And nowadays, as opposed to past, uh, we emphasize uh, partnership with other government agencies, industry, 
and sometimes even selected set of foreign government agencies on focused areas. And this is part of the reason why we are here. This is part of the reason we are experimenting with this RTML program with DARPA. We have um, collaboration with all nine institutes in NIH. We have uh, uh, collaboration with the German Science Foundation, Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, the BMBF, the Israeli Foundation, Nash Binational Science Foundation, and of course other defense and uh, DOE-related agencies. We have also been collaborating with directly with uh, industry, Google, um, Microsoft, we have worked with. Right now we have several ongoing programs with Intel and more. Okay, um, so what is this uh, RTML about? So RTML uh, is, is a distinct program that uh, the, the NSF RTML and DARPA RTML are very distinct programs in the sense that the solicitation, the proposal submission, the review criteria are all different and they are uh, in accordance with the guidelines of the respective agencies. As you know, the DARPA and NSF are um, different sorts of agencies. One is more on the fundamental research, the other is a mission agency. So our goals are somewhat different and this program is an experiment on how we can collaborate. Uh, so funding will not be commingled, or in other words, uh, no DARPA proposal will get NSF funding, nor will any NSF proposal get DARPA funding. However, the technical goals are very closely related and may provide opportunities for collaboration between the DARPA PIs and the NSF PIs through what we call the partnership supplements. Or in other words, um, in course of the three years of the program, there will be four workshops to interact between the two agencies and the PIs will be given, selected sets of PIs will be given these uh, partnership supplements um, so that this collaboration is enhanced. Uh, um, there are two specific target application areas that is of interest to DARPA and they are um, uh, autonomous vehicles and 5G applications. Uh, NSF PIs will actually be encouraged to pursue those applications, but in the interest of maintaining a focus towards basic research, we will not mandate those two things. Um, you might actually already have noticed that the, the proposal submission deadline is passed. It was a month ago, 6th of June, I think. Um, we have received a huge number of proposals. The, the response from the community has been overwhelming. I will give you numbers in a second, but uh, NSF is going to spend about $10 million. It's not a very large program, $10 million uh, for these three years. Uh, there will be two kinds of projects, the so-called small projects of half a million dollar a piece for three years, and the large projects, which would be one and a half million dollars a piece for three years. Uh, we expect that the large proposals or the large projects will interact more intensely with DARPA. Uh, the smaller awards will be more for innovative, creative ideas that uh, uh, PIs may like to pursue in the, the realm of real-time machine learning. Uh, only one out of those $10 million are uh, reserved for these uh, partnership supplements that I just mentioned. Um, and uh, we have required that the the budget requests uh, reserve uh, some amount of money for the, the PIs to uh, participate in the, in the workshops. So uh, uh, Andreas has sort of talked about this. This is a slide that was in the, um, in the solicitation. Um, so we are emphasizing essentially co-design, uh, hardware, software, algorithms, co-design. Um, we are emphasizing all stages of training uh, because you know that training is difficult, time consuming, but we will emphasize real time training if possible. Um, uh, there, there are clear metrics of performance. For example, the standard uh, performance measure, measures are size, weight, power of course is one. Latency is a new one. Um, uh, machine learning has not paid much attention to latency in the past. Uh, to the best of my understanding, machine learning has uh, in the past dealt primarily with static problems. Uh, Real-time machine learning 
even from an algorithmic standpoint, is in its infancy and not much has been done. And latency will have to be taken into account. Uh, the algorithms, of course, have to be efficient for it, for it to run fast. Um, and efficiency can take on various different forms in terms of how many bits you use, uh, the sparsity of connections, and if you are talking about deep neural networks and that sort of thing. Um, distributed ML uh, machine learning is another topic that uh, has been less worked on, and in this scenario of um, uh, sensors all over, uh, distributed machine learning will uh, uh, play a significant role. Uh, this will be important for autonomous vehicles and 5G applications. Um, and from a hardware standpoint, everybody knows these near memory computations and whatnot will play an important role. And as though all this is not enough, we have at least for the NSF part of the solicitation thrown in um, the term analog mixed signal processing. Um, and uh, notice, however, that we have excluded uh, several other things. Uh, for instance, emerging technologies, device-related research as it applies to machine learning. For instance, if you, you wanted to use uh, spintronics or optical technologies, those are not part of the RTML program. NSF has other programs supporting those things, so you welcome, as if you're a PI, you're welcome to target NSF uh, uh, solicitations for, for those topics as well, but not here at RTML. Um, I said that uh, the proposals have come in, the, the reviews have not started, the reviews actually are starting next week. I understand DARPA reviews have taken place to some extent. Um, the response has been overwhelming. We have 50 submissions of so-called large proposals, the ones that are requesting $1.5 million. We have 80 uh, proposals for uh, the small proposals, which are requesting half a million dollars. Given this, we are going to be able to support only maybe eight to 10 projects with a success rate in single digits, which is not good, but this means we need more money. We, there is lots of new ideas, perhaps, and we need to support this uh, in the next years to come. Um, so the, the, as it's been said by Andreas, the goal of this, uh, from the DARPA standpoint, is somewhat near term. And the goal is to produce first a silicon compiler and then at the end of the third year produce chips, uh, ASICs, uh, that are custom tailored for, uh, for AI applications. Um, the hope here is that uh, although uh, machine learning has been there as a field of research, uh, has been gone through peaks and valleys over many years, um, it has never touched uh, hardware in the past. So the, go the hope is that it will sort of level the playing field and even direct the future research of AI um, uh, by, by determining what is doable and what is not doable and what is just blue sky research. Um, for NSF, the long-term uh, objective is uh, more of real-time real uh, machine learning. Real-time machine learning has not been there uh, even from an algorithmic or software point of view. So we are hoping that uh, these newer applications like autonomous vehicles, 5G and all, will inspire people to look into real-time machine learning algorithms and uh, try to implement them, them in hardware. Um, I will just end by saying that this is an experiment. We haven't done this before in terms of collaboration between DARPA and NSF because the two agencies have quite a bit different goals. Uh, it's been difficult to collaborate, but this is an experiment not just in scientific terms, but also in programmatic terms. And if it succeeds, we will probably do more of these. At least that is the goal. Thank you. <laughs>